Hi everybody, this is So Heidi, and this quick tip is on making cover stitch pattern brushes in Illustrator. What I'm first going to show you is how to draw the single repeat of your cover stitch pattern brush. So using the pen tool, I'm going to draw a little zigzag that's going to be the inside zigzag portion of my cover stitch. So I click once to get one anchor point down. Now if I hold shift and click again, it constrains my axis and it makes a perfectly straight line. So from that upper point, we want to come down and to the right and click again to finish off the zigzag aspect of that element of our pattern brush. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure these two bottom lines are perfectly lined up. So I will grab my direct selection tool, which is the white arrow. I will select both of those anchor points and using the align tool now there it might have shown up on the top of your bar for you if it did not you've got your align palette over here if you're not seeing it at all you can just go window and align and it should bring up the palette for that tool we want to vertically align these to the bottom so we'll click on that now it may have just barely moved um, I didn't really see it move, but now we know that these two points are perfectly aligned on the bottom. The next thing we're going to do is draw the stitching line that would go on the top and the bottom of the cover stitch. So getting back to our pen tool, and on our stroke palette we want to turn our dashed line on, so we click the dashed line on there. And I'm going to draw it a little bit longer than it needs to be initially for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to click here. Again, holding shift to drop perfectly straight on the horizontal axis. Click again over there. Now we could draw another one on the bottom or we could just grab this one and duplicate it. You can do that very quickly and easily by clicking on it, holding down the option on a Mac or Alt on a PC and dragging. Once you start dragging, continue to hold down the option or the Alt key and hold shift. That will constrain the axis and it will bring it down exactly in line with the previous motif that you were copying it from. So now we've got this. If we took this and dragged it into our brushes palette, it would use the entire portion that you see the bounding box wrapping around as a uh, the repeat for the pattern brush. So I just want to do that really fast and show you how it would look. So you drag and drop that in. I'll go through all these details later, but I'm just doing it real quick just to show you how we don't want to do it. We'll turn the dash line off. So that didn't work very well because our zigzags are too far apart. So we'll delete that. We're here. Delete that pattern brush. And we want to line the dash line up with the edges of the zigzag. So again, we will choose our direct selection tool, the white arrow. We want to select all of the points on the left side, which are the end points for the dash line here, as well as the bottom and top point of our zigzag. Now again, you'll use your align tool. If it didn't come up on the top, use your menu over on the side here. And we want to horizontally align these to the right. So the, the dashed lines on the top and bottom are going to scoot over to the right to align with the straight edge of that zigzag. There we go. And we're going to want to do the same thing on the right side. So we select the edge points, the edge anchor points there, as well as this bottom anchor point on the edge of our zigzag. This time we want to horizontally align to the left. Okay, now we've got this and the bounding box is in the position that we need it. So that tells us that as we repeat and repeat and repeat this motif, which is what the pattern brush does, it's going to line up perfectly to make a continuous zigzag going up and down, up and down. Now the one adjustment I do want to note here is that our dash line as this edge on the top right matches up with this edge on the top left, also that happens on the bottom, these dashed lines are not going to be spaced very well. So I'll show you real quick what I mean if we were to leave it like this. So 
So when we draw that, you'll notice the dashed line here is not positioned very well. There's not quite a bit, quite enough space in between it. So I'm going to delete that, delete the pattern brush that we just made, and select that dashed line as well as the bottom, and I'm just going to adjust the size of my dash. So let's bring that down a little bit. And what you can see is that created a smaller dash, which in turn created a smaller gap in our dash line. So I think that's going to work out just about perfect. So when you want to turn this into a pattern brush, when your individual motif is ready, you select the entire portion of it, drag and drop it into the brushes menu. Now you want to make this a pattern brush. There are other instances where you will use different types of brush but for this specific example, we are using a pattern brush. So you click that, OK, and we'll call it Cover Stitch. And all the other settings in here we're going to leave alone. Uh, there is a time and place when you adjust those, but for this instance, everything just stays as it uh, came in the default settings. OK, so now you can see we've got that pattern brush, and let's see how that came out. So we'll draw a straight line, holding Shift, makes it be perfectly horizontal. We'll take the dash off and click on our brushes palette with the cover stitch and let's see how that came out. And that looks perfect. So you can see this is a great way to add cover stitch detailing to your garment and create a nice clean artboard instead of having all of these be individual lines that you hand drew. You now have this pattern brush that can be applied in a variety of instances. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.